I don't. Uh, I would have the Clippers ahead uh, of the Lakers. Ah. I, I'm glad it's close, three fit plus three fifty plus four hundred, because it is that close between the two. But I would put the Clippers ahead. I brought up in the last segment fit. The Clippers right now have a seamless fit, I believe, with George, Paul George, and Kawhi fitting in with that group. The Lakers are great on paper, but how's it going to work? So I, that's why right now I have the Clippers number one. I think Houston is too high. So I would have, you know, the Clippers, the Lakers. I'm fine with Milwaukee at three. In the West, I put Golden State ahead, a healthy Golden State. And I'm saying they'll be healthy by the playoffs with Clay. I put them third behind the two L.A. teams. And I like Denver. Right now, I like Denver and Utah better than Houston. And Utah, Utah <laughs> beat. Well, no is, that what you do? is that what you do to me? Well, I, I, Utah I beat too. OKC in five games with Paul George and Westbrook, who I think are a better fit I do than too. Harden and Westbrook. Yes. So right, and and was it Utah or was it Portland? Portland took out OKC. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. it was Portland that beat them uh, two years ago. Utah beat them. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, yeah. I, I've got Houston. They're way too high in this list. Mm. They're going to be a playoff team. Like I said, dangerous, but no. Mm. Mm. I love it. Mm. See, I just see. Who your point guard <clears throat> on Clippers? Uh, Pat, Pat Beverly. Oh, okay. And Landry Shamit. Yeah. Landry Sh like, Shamit is not okay. I like Shamit my, at the two. I like my two point guard better. Rondo and Braun. Huh. How you like that? Well, why did you put Rondo first? Whoa, 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 whoa. Time out. Right. Time out. Frank Vogel said he don't know who's starting that. Right, we, yeah, we don't worry about that. We don't worry about that. Is Braun coming off the bench because he's getting older? I don't know. We know number six is going to have the ball in his hand. Can you imagine a high pick and roll with Braun and old Bra? Hmm. We're talking about that. And Boogie, you saw Boogie? Boogie hmm. the lost 15. Looking good, Eddie Green. No, no, he looking good. I mean, no. Hmm. Ten years ago, ten years ago, and I don't mean because LeBron would have been ten years younger. Yeah. Ten years ago, it would have been, the, the Lakers would have ran away with it because of the game, the style of play. Now we're gonna force you to play our game. We're gonna force you to play our game. Mm -hmm. But it will look. I, yeah, it's slightly. Yeah, but I, I agree with Vegas. Yeah, I, I, I agree with Vegas. They called me up and said, "Shannon, what do you think about this?" I was like, "Yeah, I, li I like that. I like that." See, yeah, mm -hmm. that's how we do, Skip. Mm -hmm. Look, I like the addition. They had to do a great job. Uh, I think Rob Palinka did a masterful job of scrambling. Yeah, they were, they went all in on Kawhi, and then maybe they missed some guys. But I mean. Do you really want? Do you really want Terrence Ross at fifteen million a year for three years? I, I, I mean, some, that means you're gonna have to overpay for some of the guys. I think they got great value. The only guy I don't think they got great value for is Danny Green. But when you get into the Mavericks wanted him, and they were willing to go a third year, three for thirty nine, well, you had to step up to the plate two for thirty. And he wants to be able to compete for a title, so it made it a no brainer. But I love the addition of Boogie. I love Avery Bradley and Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis. Ooh, he been a boss to me last three years, Skip Baylor. Even after they did what they did to him, they tried to demean my man, mm. made him sit down when he was a healthy scratch. Mm. Oh, we don't want you around here. Okay, I'm going to see how you're going to do with this 27, 11, and 2 points. You realize sometimes he was a fragile scratch. Whatever. Right? Because he was <laughs> nicked Whoa, and knacked. Hold on, hold on, fragile. I know a guy over the last five years been more fragile than the brow. Can you take one guess who I'm talking about? The claw. Yeah. Oh, oh, now nah. he the claw, huh? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. What about them seventy? What about them seventy plus game? He missed on your watch. Mm. Can I, you, you like that? Like what you asked me? You like that, Skip? Uh, you know what? I don't know who's going to win the load management contest between the Lakers and the Clippers. That might determine it, right? Yeah, baby. Vegas, what's the odds on that? <laughs> I don't know. That's a good prop bet. <laughs> So you like this because it's the one sports book that put the Lakers over the Clippers slightly. But there are many other sports books, including Westgate, that we often use on this show, that still have the Clippers slightly over the Lakers. What did Sheridan say? I don't know. I didn't look it up. Why he, didn't you look it up? He didn't call me last night. No, he didn't? Yeah. You, you he didn't got... me to chime in. Really? Yeah? You, you don't DM with him? Or <laughs> <laughs> what did Braun say? Yeah, don't worry about what say, I say. He, don't worry about what I say. take a little pressure off by picking the clip? <laughs> he, was at, he was at the party, asked me why I ain't come to his party the other night. And? Yeah? I was busy. Busy doing what? Man, you know, Prepping? Skip, first of all, you know good well it's hard to do anything when you get up at 3 a.m. I do know. And go to some party during sure. the week. No, I it better be you. Friday or Saturday night. Okay, so I delivered this bad news to Shannon earlier in the show, and now I'm going to deliver it to Chris, but he's with me on this. 
not only do I have the, the Clippers slightly above the Lakers, I, I got Golden State above the Lakers because I do believe Clay Thompson will come back full force. He is the ultimate lowercase warrior, as in true warrior. And I just believe in this day and age that the ACL surgery has been so much more perfected mm -hmm. that, and, and with his mentality and his drive and now the chip, so to speak, on their shoulders because right. they have been completely written off. They might be the only one left standing with a, dare I say, big three because Steph and Draymond and Clay, um, what, were they not the foundation of 73 and 9? Right, yeah, right. Now, again, right. they don't have Iggy, but they kept Kevon Looney, who played so big for them last year. He was really good. But, and, and again, the D'Angelo move was, was sweet just to get them through the first half of the year, keep them afloat. Then if they could become, the, I don't know, the fourth seed or whatever and get some home court advantage going into the playoffs with him healthy, right. I would like them. Willie Colley Stein. Oh uh, yeah, like that, that, was, that was nice. Yeah, but but the, I, I don't think D'Angelo. I don't think D'Lo goal. He fits. Clay is catch and shoot. D'Lo needs the ball in his okay, hand. But, but I think it was a you know like a desperation move just to get them in the playoffs. Yeah. And I think I think D'Angelo can he can shoot. You yeah. know that Steph before Steve Kerr went there and Mark Jackson was a coach. Steph was high pick and roll all the time. Ball in his hands. Assists were higher than they've ever been under Kerr. And he adjusted. Obviously, he's a better shooter than D'Angelo. But I think D'Angelo will adjust in this. He won't move as much as right. Steph, but he'll so, be right. why do I like the Clippers better? Because they have a guts and a toughness the Lakers don't have. And it was already there. And they have a much better coach in place. And they have a core in place led by Patrick Beverly and Lou Williams coming off the bench that, that has... It has mental toughness to it that I'm not sure number two and Paul George have ever quite had. But when you put them in that locker room with those guys being the alphas and the leaders with Doc, now you got something. With Montrez coming off the bench, he is a force. Yeah, he is. He, he's going to play Montrez. bigger than DeMarcus will play. No. That's just me. Will Boogie get healthy? You watch him. Now, you know Boogie on a mission. Boogie done lost that weight. What do they need from Boogie? We're going to give us like 15 and 9, 16 and 9. AD gonna give us 27. You don't need more than that. Huh? Mm. Get that. You get that. That's plenty. Mm. But, uh, AD, you know AD gonna give us just what he's given us his entire mm. career. Mm. 25 plus, 12 rebounds. And you know, O'Brien, old Goat James, mm. on a mission. Mm. I keep telling you, Skip. Comeback season for the ages. Oh! Posted. The big comeback. Yeah. Okay. It's close. I, I Look, I like the Lakers. I like what they've done. And but finally, they got more questions. I'm back to Team Asparagus. You call my team Broccoli the Spurs. So I'm, <laughs> I'm calling the Utah Jazz Team Asparagus. This, this, this would be the ultimate nightmare if they get to the NBA Finals. <laughs> but I got to tell you, this team is loaded. The only reason I'm not going to pick this team is they're thrown together. It's, it's a new group with a new point guard. But if Donovan Mitchell takes off into superstardom with Mike Conley distributing the way I think is going to happen, and with Bogdanovich making shot, he is a tough clutch shot maker. If, if thing, right, if, what do you have them fourth? I, I got them fourth, but, ahead, but so again, you don't have Milwaukee. You got them low. Uh, okay, you know what? I'm just doing the, the West. Okay, just the West. I feel okay. like the the champ's going to come out of okay. the West anyway. And you know Mike Conley is great pick and roll. So he and Gobert play in the pick okay. and roll, and he got shooters with in, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Ingles and mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bogdanovich. Mm -hmm. I'll take that. If no, it you, if it clicks, if it gels yeah. on time, I, this team could easily win the West. Wow. They win the West. Easily. I, 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 look, they're dangerous. They're tough. I just can't see it. Here's the question, and maybe Mitchell is this guy. You know in the playoffs, and this is why I like, I like the Lakers and Clippers so much, you need that guy that can just, when all else fails, when they know exactly what we're doing, I can just beat you. Mm. Who's that guy on Utah? May, is it Mitchell? Maybe. I cannot tell you how many nights I had to root against Mike Conley Jr. when he was a Memphis Grizzly, when I was rooting for my Spurs, because it seemed like every year they faced off somewhere mm -hmm. in the conference finals. Yeah. He killed me. I would ask Ernestine. I would just roll on the floor and say, they can't stop him. You want to talk about a clutch shot maker, just a clutch playmaker? He is so the under most underrated point guard maybe in, in all my career that – where he just doesn't get the accolades because he was stuck in the West. In the West, right. yep. Stuck in the West for still a very good team. This is going to be his last hurrah. He's up there in age, but he's perfect for this team. That was one of the key moves of the offseason, and it came early and it came quietly. Well, we got something for us. Mm. Do you? Oh, yeah, O'Bron. Mm. <laughs> oh, man, you see him getting them shots up at 4-5. Mm. Mm. Before 4-5, before he head to the set at Warner Brothers, Skip, mm. getting up shots and El Segundo.
The man's serious about that biz now. Old, old video. It ain't no old video. It ain't no old video. It's old. No, it's, no, no, no. It's, no. it's true. It's stamped. It's stamped. That's why. Is it? Yep. I didn't see any stamp on it. <laughs> Excellent points okay. all the way around. Chris, we're going to get you to hang with us for one more segment. Did the Lakers get played by Kawhi? Mm. Skip, and now Shannon's favorite mm. topic, I think. Mm -hmm. We'll discuss that <laughs> up next.